uh, dear pure urology facebook viewers uh, today is a special day for us uh, today's speaker is professor uh, nq dimitri and uh, as you all know very well across the world thulium fiber laser particularly in russia india in 2018 has created a big wave and challenged the homium laser we were all uh, confused between the 20 watts 30 watts 60 watts and uh, 100 watts 120 watts homium lasers all of a sudden in 2018 when i used first time in uh, india it was in 2018 december live conference where uh, it has high frequency when i was doing high frequency popcorn everything was becoming powder without without much technical skill after that the story everybody knows everywhere in the world it is c approved fda approved now enucleation of the prostate enucleation of the bladder tumor is superb in selected cases three conditions endourology it has almost invaded and giving heavy competition for homium laser both are scientifically proven that almost equal with this background the tfl inventor is dimitri nq today we are fortunate for our pure urology uh, he is the invited speaker i will take brief details uh, from him thank you very much for joining and keep please thank you very much uh, yes uh, good afternoon dear colleagues it's uh, my real pleasure to join my indian friends uh, whose professional level i respect a lot and uh, thank you for the invitation yeah my my first question is uh, who is your mentor in uh, a surgical field how did you enter from uh, into the surgical profession uh, way back at which which year of your age well it's a it's, it's a good question there was a, always a work of a, a big team a big team of uh, my teachers and of uh, my colleagues so uh, and uh, uh, there was a great uh, topic of course uh, the, the thulum fiber laser i just would like to remind briefly that uh, it was developed, uh, first developed in 2016 in Russia with researchers and uh, from Station of University and physicists from IPG Medical. And in 2017, the first abstract of in vitro trial on uh, using it for lithotripsy was performed in EAU meeting in London, and it was awarded as the best poster of the stone session. In e during EU meeting 2017. So, and after that, we gathered a rather big experience with thulium fiber laser. And now it's absolutely, I agree with you that it's absolutely a new generation of lasers. And now uh, it becomes more and more popular all over the world. And more and more manufacturers all over the world promote this technology. And now it's really widely used. Uh who is the scientist along with you who who helped you to discover this? Who is the main person behind uh, this uh, technology? It's totally new. Uh, it's totally new doped ions going through the uh, long tube and then that producing flash of light is totally new concept. Uh, well, it was absolutely our job, the, our generation of urologists in Russia. So my and my colleagues, and of course, uh, it was a great uh, job of researchers, of physicists from IPG Medical, uh, Andreeva, Al Schuller, uh, Professor Al Schuller, Yvtikhev. And uh, at the same time, uh, we try to involve uh, the, the main researchers from all over the world because it was very important to listen to their opinion. Uh, we invited uh, for stones, Professor Ali Vietraxer, uh, we invited for soft tissues, we invited Professor Andreas Gross and Professor Thomas Herman to discuss it. We invited for bladder tumors, we invited Professor Sharak Shariat, who is one of the main leaders in this area. So all the leaders, experts from all over the world, they help us to move this, uh, to move this uh, technology forward. And together we did it. Great. So with this, I will introduce you officially uh, through this uh... Um, uh, I will share. So I will share this. Just a second, please. Like 
sorry for that so dear friends uh, let me introduce uh, officially about uh, sir uh, this is a video based surgical presentation on two flap and uh, we are uh, here now uh, reading about his uh, curriculum by a professor at Sachnov University and in Vienna Medical University, urological surgeon specializing in laser BPH surgery and eye technology treatment for prostate and kidney cancer, uh, co-developed a family of thulium fiber lasers, which are now widely used for management of BPH and uh, bladder cancer and kidney stones. This will be remembered for decades. This will be remembered for more than decades because it's a, a landmark uh, 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 landmark development in the history of the lasers in the field of the urology. Developed a technique for TFL N block resection of NMBC, award winning video at EAUA 2018, third video prize at EAU 2020. Board member of European Association of Urology section of Euro Technology, expert for the Ministry of Science and Higher Education of the Russian Federation. Publication activity number of articles are 198, Scopus author. Uh, high index 18, most uh, prolific researcher of uh, Sachinov University 2020, editor for many journals, current opinion in urology, frontiers in surgery, reviewer for World Journal of Urology, British Journal of Urology, lasers in surgery and medicine, translational journal of urology, Asian journal of urology, BMC urology, andrology, research and reports of urology. The Lancet, great. The last uh, one is the prestigious uh, journal. And you can't ask more than any academics than this. With this introduction, I uh, hand over the program uh, to Dimitri and Kiv, sir. Over to you. Thank you very much once again for kind acceptance of the invitation. Please take your time. A lot of audience will be seeing today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow through the same YouTube, which will be there forever. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. So, so dear colleagues, uh, well, during this presentation, so let's start from the beginning. During this presentation, I will uh, I will present the endoscopic relation of the prostate using uh, thulium fiber laser. So it's well known that endoscopic ablation is an alternative to simple prostatectomy in huge glands but it's over it's also an alternative to transuretral resection in small and medium sized glands and in this case we have a patient his prostate volume and uh, we perform endoscopic ablation on the prostate the surgery lasts 17 minutes including inoculation and morselation there is no editing so it's a real live surgery video so uh in this case we use a two loop technique and we start with the incision at six o'clock position from the bladder neck to the vermontanum when we came close to the verm we use two loop technique when we came close to the vermontanum we go under the left lobe and uh, you, you can see so here we separate uh, the left lobe from the capsule now we try to continue doing the uh, incision at six o'clock position and connect these two incisions. The first one that we make from the bladder neck to the vermontanum and the next one that was done under the left lobe. So uh, you may see how effective and at the same time delicate the laser, the laser incisions are. So here we clearly see the, the, the prostate capsule and the penetration depth of thulium fiber laser is just 0. 15 millimeters. So in comparison, for example, to whole mimiac laser, where the penetration depth is from 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 millimeter. So we can effectively cut the tissue. And at the same time, what is really very important, we can control the penetration depth. And there is no damage of deep tissue layers. And at the same time, as I have already mentioned, we effectively cut the tissue. So we try to, uh, once again, we try to connect these two incisions. The first one, which was made under, under the left lobe, and uh, 
this incision and we can clearly see the capsule and move forward uh, to separate uh, to separate adenoma to separate adenoma from the capsule. So uh, we know that thulium fiber laser can work in two modes: in uh, pulse quasi continuous mode, it's a long pulse, and it is optimal for soft tissue surgery, and it also can work in super pulse mode. So uh, it's short pulse, and it is most optimal for lithotripsy. Can we do? Uh, can we operate soft tissue with short pulse? With super pulse mode, yes, we can, but it will have like a whole mimiac effect. So it will rupture the tissue with a stream of vapor bubbles. And with uh, long pulse, with pulse quasi continuous mode, it will cut, effectively cut the tissue. So here we, we use, once again, we use long pulse, pulse quasi continuous mode. And the settings are as follows we use energy 1. Point, uh, power, energy 1.5 joule and power uh, 50 watts. And these settings are the most preferable for prostate surgery. So it allows us to effectively cut the tissue and at the same time to achieve good hemostasis. So you may see now, uh, so it's that we every, everywhere we reach the capsule, so it's a real enucleation. We try to combine uh, mechanical movements and laser energy together and where it's possible, we with mechanical movements, we separate adenoma from the capsule. And laser energy also helps us to uh, separate the tissue from the capsule where we need it and to uh, do rather good hemostasis. So now you may see that we achieve a 12 o'clock position. And uh, we work with the laser like with a scalpel, so we cut the tissue uh, effectively. Now we go slowly to the uh, to the right lobe. We know that uh, different techniques of endoscopic inflation are available: unblock, two lobes, three lobes, and according to published data, uh, if we talk about complication rates, uh, uh, out certain outcomes. They are absolutely comparable, and the final choice depends only upon their uh, depends upon the surgeon, surgeon preferences. So the next move here is the nodule. You may see here is the capsule. Uh, what we do next? We make uh, an incision at 12 o'clock position. So we could go to the Vermontana, turn the endoscope 180 degree counterclockwise, and from the Vermontana we move to the bladder neck and uh, uh, separate the tissue here. So this is a two lobe technique. And you may see that we do it uh, uh, here and we meet the incision that was made before. And now the left lobe, is, uh, now the, the right lobe is separate from the bladder neck. And we continue separating it at 12 o'clock position. Here it is. What we do next is the final, uh, the final option is we uh, separate adenoma from the sphincter area. You may see we have here like a bridge. So we leave a small veil like piece of tissue. Uh, this veil, veil does not influence the postoperative urination, but we try to be very delicate in this area to prevent uh, postoperative incontinence. So, and we, very delicate, we work, work in this area and separate uh, this uh, separate this lobe from the uh, from the sphincter area and remove it into the bladder. What we do next, we try to stop all the bleeders, uh, and uh, we do it. You see, very delicately. Uh, we know that there are two uh, pedals. Thulium fiber laser has has two pedals and we can put different settings to these two pedals. And the majority of the surgeons put uh, 50, 60 power to one pedal and uh, 20, 30 watts to another pedal and do uh, delicate hemostasis with another pedal. Frankly, I don't use it. I, I, during the surgery, I use only one pedal. I just keep the distance between the fiber and the tissue a little bit bigger and uh, this way, I achieve lower uh, power, 
lower energy. So, and with this uh, option, I use the, I, I do hem hemostasis. So during the surgery, I always use the one pedal. And when I need, once again, when I need to achieve, uh, to, to do hemostasis, I just make the distance between the fiber and the tissue a little bit bigger. And this way I achieve a rather good hemostasis. So now we continue to nucleate the, uh, the right lobe. So we, we have already made this incision at six o'clock position. We also turn the endoscope 180 degree counterclockwise and continue separate it with mechanical movements and with laser energy from the capsule. You, make, you may see it here. So it's also always very important to see the border to see our, to see the plane. So to do an occlusion, it's not a resection, it's not a vaporization, it's an occlusion. So the basic principle is always to, to remove all the tissue completely. And we clearly see the border here, we clearly see the bladder neck, and we move in this direction and com combine mechanical movements with laser energy and, uh, here is the bladder neck, so we separate uh, we separate the right lobe from the bladder neck and continue moving forward. So in this case, uh, thulium fiber laser, it's a very good tool for us. Uh, first of all, it's a good cutting tool, so we can effectively cut the tissue, uh, especially this tool. So can we do, we, we know that we can do an occlusion with different devices. We can do it with uh, electropotry. We can do it with whole yak laser, with high power, with low power. We can do it even with green light laser, which we use for vaporization. So, but what are the advantages of thulium fiber laser? And one of its main advantages, it's very good cutting properties with the same time with minimum penetration depth. So you may see that there is no a lot of burning during working of uh, thulium fiber laser. So we can effectively uh, cut the tissue. And at the same time, we see all the layers and there is no much carbonization during the procedure. And it's important uh, option, not only for the experts, but also for the beginners to learn the endoscopic inoculation of the prostate. Because when you lose right inoculation plane, it can happen with everyone, with the beginners and with the experienced surgeons. Uh, so you can always return to the right inoculation plane using good cutting properties of thulium fiber laser. This is a very uh, important option. And we conducted a study on learning curve of different uh, energy sources for endoscopic inoculation of the process. And we found that it's easier to learn thulium endoscopic inoculation with thulium fiber laser. So this is a final move. We uh, now separate, uh, we also leave here a small veil like piece of tissue and separate now the right lobe. Uh, you see, we, we work very delicately here. Uh, here is the sphincter, but we don't touch it at all. Uh, we just uh, see this veil and work with this veil and separate the adenoma. So you may see that the surgery lasts 10 minutes at this moment and we finish an ablation. So, and you may see that we achieve capsule everywhere. So if we talk about a prostate volume, 180 cubic centimeters, 160 cubic centimeters, the surgery can last 45 minutes. And I have also this video on my uh, YouTube channel. So, of course, it depends upon the patient, depends upon the density of the prostate, upon the anatomy, but usually the surgery lasts one hour and we can do high uh, quality endoscopic inoculation of the prostate and the volume, frankly, is not so important. What we tr try to do now, we try to achieve good hemostasis before we start mercilation. Uh, now we, we we at this moment we have already seen that uh, uh, we don't have too much bleeding. This is the final look to ureteral orifice. Uh, I don't pay too much attention to this point because once again, due to the penetration depth of thulium fiber laser, 0 0.15 millimeter, and we know that even if we damage ureteral orifice during nucleation, if there are in a nucleation area, it's not a dangerous move because there is no damage of deep tissue layer. Uh, 
Uh, so this is also an important, excuse me, I will, uh, this is an important step because now we have a final loop and we see that here we have an initial tissue uh, in the sphincter area, in this veil. So what we do, so we just push it forward and with the laser energy, cut it very delicately. And one, one more pulse, here it is. And yes, and finish it. So, and now we see that there is uh, absolutely enough for good irradiation. There is no additional tissue that will make any difficulties for, for the patient for urination in future. This is the final view. Uh, and now we can start mercilation. So once again, why we do not focus on urethral orifice and we conducted a study on this topic. It was published in International Urology and Nephrology Journal. So we know that there is, uh, during inoculation, uh, if we damage urethral orifice, there is no damage of deep tissue layers. So there is no scarring and there is no risk of uh, risk of urethral stenosis. And in this case, we, we, of course, we prefer to find the orifice in the, in the end of the procedure, but we do not uh, put any stent. We monitor these patients. We do ultrasound uh, one week after, one month after. But in all cases that uh, we uh, damage the urethral orifice and we monitor these patients, there were no need for urethral orifice stenting, and there is no urethral stenosis in this case. So. Uh, now we change the instruments. Uh, we try to leave the, the bladder full uh, and uh, change the endoscope very quickly. Uh, in this case, we use uh, uh, a piranha endoscope, a uh, piranha mercilator uh, presented by uh, Richard Wolf. Uh, we know that, and maybe in this moment, it's, it is one of the best mercilators, so we can compare it with uh, uh, Carl Stortz. Uh, in this mercilator, the knife uh, move uh, side by side. So in contrast to mercilator like Luminous where uh, the blade move forward and back. And according to, to one of the last studies which was published in, in Europe, they compare different mercilators. We know that these mercilators where the blade move uh, moves uh, side to side, uh, these mercilators are more safe and more effective. So, and you may see that we have very good picture, we have very good visibility, uh, we, we achieve good hemostasis, uh, and uh, the mercilation goes absolutely without any difficulties. It's just an absolutely routine procedure. Uh, at the end of the procedure, we put the catheter. Usually we put the catheter for one day. Uh, always start the irrigation system, irrigate the bladder. And day first, we remove the catheter and discharge the patient from the, discharge the, patient from the clinic. So this is it. If there are any questions, so I will be more than happy to discuss, to discuss it with you. Yeah, thank, uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so sorry for uh, stopping sharing because a lot of questions are there. A lot of the Indians are using this laser. I will go quickly a uh, one by one question. Uh, number one, <clears throat> thulium fiber laser is a long pulse width laser primarily. So when you use in a, a stone uh, uh, for dusting, for popcorn, and for enucleation of the prostate, Three points I'm asking. For dusting, for popcorn, for enucleation, how do you adjust this long pulse wave uh, width? Primarily, it is long pulse width. There is a lot of advantage with that. Is there any need to reduce this to short pulse in any of these three surgeries? Well, it's a very hot question. It's a good question, very at the same time, very hot question. So um, I will answer this question as follows. So uh, if we talk about long pulse, it is pulsed quasi-continuous mode. Its peak power is 100, 100 watt, and its average power is uh, also 100 watt. So this setting is optimal for soft tissue surgery, and I would not recommend to use these settings for uh, uh, bladder, uh, for, for stone ablation. 
For stone ablation, it's optimal to use sharper pulse mode, short pulse. So this is an, an important difference. With uh, long pulse, we cannot destroy 100% of stones. And this is the message that we address to the uh, urologic community. So this is very, very important. So, and you know that the first Tulium fiber laser that was produced, this was Tulium fiber laser, it was pulsed quasi uh, continuous mode and it was optimal only for, it was used only for soft tissues. The next Tulium fiber laser was super pulsed and it was used for only for, preferably for stones. And only the third, the last model, was the combined machine that it was possible to use for stones. It has short pulse and, uh, uh, and long pulse for soft tissues. Okay. And now and this machine became the prototype for all other thulium fiber lasers in the world. Yes. So th this is a very important point. So that, it, that you can, uh, we do not recommend to use long pulse was quasi continuous mode for stones because you cannot destroy all the stones with this mode. A second question, as far as enucleation is concerned, because thulium fiber laser has multiple combination of settings, multiple combination of settings, uh, what do you think uh, between the frequency and the uh, energy? When will you get a bubbling effect which you are uh, seeing with homium beautifully. Sometimes you are using mechanical and then start, mechanical and then start quickly so that it is peeling off and you are cutting, peeling off, cutting. Instead of that, you only do with laser fiber something separation by itself. Is there any setting? People say low frequency, high energy can do that. Is it correct? Uh, well, um... Uh, uh, before we start use uh, uh, before we start use thulium fiber laser in our clinical practice, we uh, conducted uh, in vitro trials, preclinical trials, and we try to find optimal settings for soft tissue surgery. And so we had a laser lab in at Sechin of University, and a lot of experiments were done there. And we try to find optimal settings. Of course, you can work, you can change them, but we found that the optimal settings for, for prostate surgery is energy 1.5 joule. Okay. And yes, and power 50 watts. And these settings are the most preferable for effective tissue cutting and at the same time to get a minimum uh, carbonization effect. At the same time, for the beginners, because they move slower, slower, we recommend to low the power and to low the energy. So it's it could be 1.3, 1.4 joule, and uh, 30 watts. Okay. So with this with these settings, they can move slower, and there will be no much carbonization effect. At the same time, we also try to find to find optimal settings for bladder cancer surgery and for, to work with a bladder wall. And for bladder cancer surgery, the optimal settings are one joule and 10 watt. With bladder, and this is very important because with these settings, there will be no carbonization. And this is especially important during bladder cancer surgery because with bladder cancer, we know that the bladder wall is rather thin, it's just four millimeters. And we have to get the muscle and we have to see clearly see all the layers when we separate the tumor during unblock resection. And this is a very important point because with, with carbonization, we won't see these layers. And when we use these settings, one joule and 10 watts, we, and very important that this is a long pulse, long pulse, pulse quasi continuous mode, we can effectively see all the layers, all the layers, get the muscle, and there is no, we, we, we have done, uh, more than 200 cases of unblock resection using thulium fiber laser and no perforation. We didn't get any perforation at all because we always clearly see all the layers. This is very important message for the surgeons who work with thulium fiber laser, especially for bladder cancer surgery. Yeah, I appreciate that. We have tried 110 is a very standard setting only for enucleation of prostate. Uh, various people have suggested, but you are suggesting 50, 1.5. Uh, that means 1.5 by somewhere 35, 40 frequency. 
uh, for the experienced person and uh, 1.5 watts and uh, maybe 20 uh, frequency leading to uh, 30 watts for the inexperienced beginner because he moves slowly. And for bladder uh, cancers, you are suggesting one and 10, the frequency 10, which is a beautiful setting in long pulse wave for the uh, laser dusting also. I have one question for the, uh, uh, because you are the pioneer in TFL, uh, I found that fragmentation mode one joule 10 hertz produces beautiful uh, dusting effect with thulium fiber. Whereas if you keep in dusting mode, it is very slow, very, very slow, maybe more useful in ureter. But if you keep in fragmentation mode, larger stones dust initially very well. Larger stones dust initially very well in fragmentation mode. Uh, do you think there is any, uh, because even though it is not relevant today, we will take the opportunity to ask the settings for the stone also for dusting for popcorn. Uh, well, it, it, it's a it's it's a uh, it's a good question. You know, we uh, all these studies were, were also conducted in our laser lab before we uh, recommend them, and the majority of this, this uh, of this uh, of, of these settings now that we were recommended by uh, our university after these trials are now recommended by the manufacturers. If you put them in, into uh, your uh, laser. Uh, if you try to find optimal settings, you will find the settings that were recommended by uh, our team. So, if we talk about uh, if we talk about uh, dusting, we try to uh, decrease to zero point uh, zero point fifteen. If we talk about fragmentation, we talk about zero point five. So, uh, we try to uh, we know that in dusting mode, uh, film fiber laser is two times two times more effective than whole mimiac laser. Yeah. If we talk about fragmentation, they are mostly comparable, but the, the, the main advantage of thulium fiber laser is, there, uh, is, the, is, the, is the dusting. And we know according to uh, uh, endurology community, the majority of surgeons prefer to do uh, dusting with stones and dust it. So, however, Yes, fragmentation is still alive, and a lot of surgeons use this strategy. And even, but if we talk about fragmentation, the efficacy of film fiber laser is comparable with whole mimia. But of course, the main advantage is the dusting mode, and in this mode, you, you may see all the perf all the advantages of using film fiber laser. Uh, uh, the the uh, coagulation during enucleation, uh, as you said in your video. Uh, it doesn't appear to have changed your foot pedal. Uh, thulium fiber laser have two foot pedals. You are using same uh, a setting for the coagulation also, maybe by keeping little distance away, not touching, and you are able to do that. So do you, do you feel that uh, it has primarily both properties of incision as well as coagulation in the same setting? Do you think so? Well, um, we know that... Um, <laughs> You know, I think for the beginners, maybe it will be easier to use two pedals. Okay. But after, yes, after you get some experience. So in my experience, I, I have done more than 2,000 cases. Uh, and of, of course, you know, I, I, I always try to combine uh, quality with the speed. So, and uh, uh, at the beginning, maybe uh, I will agree that it, it will be easier to use two pedals and coagulate with another pedal. But... What I try to read to teach residents, uh, first of all, is try to feel this distance between the laser fiber and the tissue. So it's very important not to make a damage of the capsule at the same time to goggulate the vessels, try to uh, do very precise incisions. It's very important for the surgeon to feel this difference between the laser fiber and the tissue. Yeah. And when you start to use one pedal, you have to feel this distance. Yeah. And when you feel this distance, it will be much easier for you to do the surgery and uh, it will be quicker and uh, you don't need uh, additional, additional pedal because we know that when we make the distance between the fiber and the tissue a little bit bigger, you, we decrease the power. Oh, yeah. We decrease the power. And uh, it, it will be the same settings. 
yeah. I think it's very important to feel this difference, you know, yeah. because it's just a very slow move, very uh, delicate move. And uh, of course, you should uh, spend some time uh, during surgery to feel it. It's not one or 10 surgeries. You need, of course, you need time for that. Uh, Dr. Fabio from Brazil has asked a question. He appreciated your surgery. He says that one controversy, majority of the thulium fiber laser enucleation people use uh, a bit of uh, mechanical uh, mechanical rotation with the scope, whereas in homium, it may not be required. But uh, I have seen uh, it can be done without, uh, without mechanical also, but a little bit mechanical may not... Uh, may not, at the end of your surgery, the mucosa at the sphincter was totally intact. So do you believe uh, in uh, mechanical more or uh, direct cutting more? This is the only controversy for thulium fiber laser. It's an amazing question because, you know, uh, uh, this is just my technique. This is just my technique. And I use the same technique for uh, when I use holmium laser inoculation. Oh. When I do homium laser inoculation, I use the same technique when I uh, use electrocautery for inoculation. So it's just my personal technique. I try to combine mechanical movements and laser energy. Can you do uh, thulium fiber laser inoculation only using laser energy? Yes, you can. Uh, so we also see that the surgeons who do electro inoculation, they use the majority of time mechanical movements it just i think it just depends upon the uh, upon the surgeon's decision upon his technique but uh, why i try to combine it because it helps me clearly always clearly see the enucleation plane yeah. so i always try to follow enucleation plane i want to be 100% sure that i am in the right enucleation plane yeah. and mechanical movements Help me, because we know that if you are in a right inoculation plane, it's always easy to separate adenoma from the but, capsule. But white color uh, makes you feel happy, and then you cut very fast. You, your video, you are moving very fast, so that charring never appeared. For a junior, they try to keep in touch for a longer time. Then in that case, mechanical will help you again to see the white color and then go white color and then go white color and then go. So that's fine. Uh, that's absolutely uh, yes but uh, maybe one also an important me important message especially for the surgeons who start doing this surgery so uh, do not try to use too much force yeah so all your mechanical movements should be very delicate yeah <clears throat> too much uh, when you see any resistance use laser energy so it will it should, all your mechanical movement movements should be very delicate it shouldn't uh, take too much force. Yeah. So uh, most of these lasers are contact lasers, but when you see dusting uh, in a stone, uh, if you put one 10 joule for me in fragmentation, if you keep one half millimeter away, so fine dusting happens with the thulium fiber laser. Uh, they, they can work both in contact and non-contact modes, I think, provided you are very short distance. That, that makes a little difference between the effect uh, in, in in prostate, uh, if you insert into the tissue, it will cut wherever it it uh, wherever it touches. It's so fast in cutting without bleeding. Uh, that that may be good for junior. So, what do you think? Where you have to contact? Where you have to keep away is an experience. Uh, well, it's I, uh, it also depends upon upon the surgeon's techniques. I try when I uh, I use the both, so I can keep the the, the fiber uh, uh, keep some distance or I can come close to the tissue. So it depends upon what I would like to do. So if I work and I clearly see the layer, I just move forward and I need to quickly separate, I can put the fiber inside the tissue. But of course, it should be very delicate move because you should always see what you uh, cut and you should always feel your penetration depth, not to make a damage of the capsule or uh, damage of some other structure. So you should always control your uh, penetration depth and understand your cutting movements. But you can use both. You can do uh, keep the distance and come closer. It just depends upon what you would like to do at this, uh, especially in this in this uh, direct moment. Yeah. Last couple of questions. Uh, the laser fiber 150 microns. I am enjoying. 
in RIRS, uh, people are saying 150 will come, will come, will come. Have you seen? Have you used? Are you enjoying the 50 being the point? Uh, well, well, of course. And um, uh, the first, uh, the first uh, uh, in, vi in vitro trial uh, our was was uh, on comparison 150 micron uh, thulium fiber laser. Uh, was published, our study was published in World Journal of Urology. And now at this moment, we are finishing and will soon, I hope it will be published. Uh, our first clinical trial, uh, it was a prospective randomized trial on comparison 150, 200 tulum fiber lasers and 200 whole mimiac laser fiber. So, and the first data will be published soon and I'm sure it will, uh, it will be a very interesting for you. So uh, have a, yes, have you're absolutely right. Uh, that with uh, whole mimiac laser, due to its technology, 200 laser micro is the minimum we can get. With thulium fiber, we can get up to 70 micro laser fiber. Okay. And of course, in the era when endoscopes are becoming smaller and smaller, yeah. we need laser fibers that would fit that. Yes. And. At this moment, we have 150 micron laser fiber, and I hope the future is bright, absolutely bright for this technology because it will give much more space in the endoscope, and it means more visibility. Uh, visibility will be better. It means that irrigation will be better, and we see that the dusting that we can get with 150 uh, micron laser fiber is really good, and the fragments is really becomes uh uh smaller with uh, oh. with the smaller fibers oh. but uh, we will uh, present it and we'll discuss all the details in the nearest future yeah yeah uh, vijay karla has asked one question you have seen homium laser you have seen uh, thulium yag laser you have seen thulium fiber laser constantly uh, things are changing from green laser diode laser and now again we are listening high voltage YAG, uh, the pulse style laser for stone. YAG, uh, again, thulium YAG laser pulse style for stone. Uh, have you, uh, are you in touch with that laser being, being, being very interested in laser? Uh, are you aware yes. of it? Uh, well, it's, it's a new player on the market, uh, uh, thulium uh, YAG pulse laser. Pulse and laser. now uh, we, we, we have already, uh, uh, we have already seen in vitro trials. There are, they, they look optimistic, and of course we are looking for first uh, clinical trials on this laser. And uh, I also think that the future can be bright to this technology. But uh, at this moment, I do not have experience with using this laser. I hope it will be in the in nearest future. But we'll see. Uh, it's it, it's an interesting technology, but it's still it's still a yak laser, so it's still a uh, rather big machine with. Uh, 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 with um, uh, water cooling system in contrast to thulium fiber, which use air cooling. So there are still a, a lot of questions to this technology, but we'll see. And I think in the nearest future, we will compare them and see uh, the advantages of one or of, the, of another. But of course, it's a new player on the market and it's very interesting to see all the advantages of this technology. Yeah. So do you think that thulium fiber laser can be used anywhere else, like in PCNL tract where there is some bleeder. Have you ever tried because its coagulation property is too good? Its coagulation property is too good. And if any vein can get coagulated in PCNL tract, uh, any, any are uh, not tried? Well, uh, regarding uh, uh, using uh, thulium fiber laser for PCNL, it was also uh, several years ago, it was first clinical trial of using thulium fiber laser for stones. It was conducted uh, also at Sechenov University and it was published in World Journal of Urology and we showed that uh, thulium fiber laser is an effective tool uh, also for PCNL, for, for, uh, uh, for fragmentation. So it, it works, it's an effective, it's an effective tool both for stones and for tissues. And uh, now it's, I think it's uh, the beginning of uh, the long trip uh, of thulium fiber laser. And of course, we need more and more 
different randomized clinical prospective randomized trial on thulin fiber laser to prove it, its efficacy. And uh, we'll see it, but the, of course, the first data that we have from different parts of the world show that it is good effective tool for stones and both for soft tissues. So thank you very much. As long as the lasers are there in neurology, you will be remembered for your research, interest, uh, and enthusiasm and knowledge. Phenomenal number of papers. I was going through your uh, recent published articles in 2022, randomized control trial between uh, between homium and uh, thulium fiber laser. In, in block uh, uh, resection of the uh, bladder tumor, you are really good. If possible, after six months, I will ask you again for that video. You are extremely good in N-block resection of bladder tumor. We have seen in your video, and I also do it, uh, really muscle fibers will be seen without any charring. All the crisscross muscle fibers will be seen in distended bladder so nicely. Thanks for innovating this type of laser and introducing to the world. You made, in fact, your country, Russia, proud in urology uh, because of this laser. Because most of the technology comes from the uh, other way around Europe, uh, London, but this is the laser first approved, first used, first clinical trials from your country. Hats off. Thank you very much for joining today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a very interesting question. I spent time with real pleasure and hope to see you soon during EU meeting in Milano. And uh, all the best to you and looking forward to our next meeting.